Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to review the John Lobb Lopez Loafer. These are the most expensive shoes that I've ever reviewed. They're $1,780 full retail price. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell hoarder. Yeah, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Hey guys, if you're a fan of my channel, it's so glad to see you again. I know a lot of you guys have been saying, where are the shoe videos? My channel has, uh, you know, m migrated, I guess you could say, diverged. I now have shoe content as well as automotive content since buying a 1971 Oldsmobile. So I know there's a lot of you that are really, uh, are probably really happy to see a new shoe video. Um, so... Uh, this pair of shoes, by the way, um, you might have gotten a hint from the cover. I'm actually going to compare them. I'm, I've got a, a, a few people that aren't in the know with shoes. I'm going to show them this shoe, the John Lob, the John Lob Lopez. This is a cheap, you know, Bostonian loafer. And then I'm also going to compare it to, although it's not a loafer, I know this is not um, equal, okay? It should be another loafer. A loafer. Uh, this is a Cobbler Union. I think this is the Richard, a Cobbler Union. Uh, um, this has hidden channel stitching and a fiddleback waist. This shoe's $450, full retail price. This one's like $60, $70, full retail price. And as I said in the intro there, this one's $1,780. Uh, I'm actually going to show these to some people and get their opinions as well. You'll see why in a little bit. But first things first, like I said, I'm going to review these shoes. Now, um, I'll cut in a picture here. If you know me, um, I did not go out and spend $1,780 on this pair of loafers. I actually found these at a thrift store and I paid a whopping $15. So I think that means I got them for about 99.2% off or something like that. Uh, if you're a fan of my channel and you've seen shoes, uh, sh my shoe videos in the past, you know I'm a big fan of rubber protective half soles in the past, but I'm going to let you know these came with them. This quality of level, level of quality shoe, uh, generally speaking, I would not put these on. I, I just, I would find it tacky, but they were installed by a cobbler. You can see they're cut in flush, so if I, you know, pull them off, it would, you know, I can't really pull them off because... They cut the leather to get the, the um, you know, some people call these a topi uh, flush, which, you know, like I said, if I pull them off, then it's going to look terrible. It's going to look even worse. But I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I believe these have hidden channel stitching, I believe. I'm going to double check. Um, but I would never put those on there like this. These shoes do for sure have hidden channel stitching. What does that mean? That means the leather here is cut because they are stitched on. All right, this is a good your welted shoe. You can see the stitching there in the outsole through the welt. So they, they cut this way, like about that far. You can kind of see the reflection. You can see the, the, the indentation. This leather is peeled open, right? This part of the leather is peeled back. The, the shoe is stitched, and then that leather is laid back down, okay? So if you take a close look here at the shoe, if you peel the upper back a little bit, you do see the stitching there. John Lobb is not the kind of shoemaker that would put cosmetic stitches in, you know, fakes, uh, um, you know, stuff like that. The insole, usually you can lift up this insole and see, but this uh, insole liner in this one and this one here are both glued down very heartily. I can't peel it up without, you know, eh, damaging it or something like that. Um, well, I think I maybe can hear a part of it. Now, I can't peel it back far enough to really see anything, but so the point is, these to me, um, I'm assuming, I can't really see for sure, these are also hidden channel stitched. Now, like I said, uh, these are quite an expensive shoe. One of the neat things that you see when you get these is, can you see there? It says Lopez, and then it says 10 and a half, um, and then it is E, I can't quite read it. There's a bunch of letters there. I think it says E4, 3, C, 5, something like that, but... The point is it's handwritten, right? That's pretty spectacular. Now, 10 and a half, that's UK sizing. To go from UK to American, you take the UK size. I, there's no way I could wear a 10 and a half US. Add one, so this is equivalent to 11 and a half uh, US, okay? So first of all, who is John Lobb? Uh, now, one of the more difficult things that I do in these videos, I believe, is trying to satiate the more experienced viewers, you know, who are already well into this stuff, uh, you know, and experts and stay accurate with that. 
without talking above the newest person. Um, so uh, a John Lava, uh, I'll, I'll read you from their website. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase. John Lobb boasts a bespoke atelier, I think that's how you say it, uh, atelier in Paris, a by request service in a men's and women's ready to wear collection produced in its Northampton workshop. That's in England, right? Some of the finest footwear in the world is made in England. Since its inception over 150 years ago, uh, Lobb has trod an innovative path. Its founder, who traveled on foot from the Cornish coast to London in 1851 as a young apprentice bootmaker, also journeyed to Australia during the gold rush, creating hollow-heeled boots in which miners could stow contraband gold nuggets. I wonder if that has anything to do with the, you know, that traditional John Lobb, this, this funky design they put on the heels. I wonder. Uh, once returning, on returning to London in 1863, Lobb was named as the bootmaker to the Prince of Wales uh, before opening the brand's first bespoke boutique on Regent Street in 1866. In 1899, John Lobb evolved its international presence, opening its first bo uh, Paris boutique. In 1976, the brand was acquired by Hermes. Looks like Hermes, but it's Hermes. Uh, and in 1982, spanning 19 global stores from New York to Beijing, Dubai, and Tokyo, John Lobb Limited remains family run, catering to its local bespoke clientele and operates from their St. James Street location in London. I'll link in the video below a couple really cool videos about John Lobb uh, from a Kirby Allison's YouTube channel where I first started to really learn about him. It's really neat. My understanding is that the uh, bespoke shoe making shop on the uh, St. James Street, on the James Street in London that we're going to see in the videos is not where the ready to wear are made. You know, two separate. There's two John Lobbs is kind of my understanding. Okay. Uh, the label's ready-to-wear designs are made using a complex 190-step manufacturing process in Northampton. So, um, it, to the average person, I think there's very few people outside of shoe aficionados out there that if you said John Lobb, you know, are going to have any idea who they are, right? But that being said, they are one of the finest, uh, most well-renowned and world-respected shoemakers in the world, if you are into shoes, John Lobb has a massive, powerful presence, not in the volume of shoes, but in the, um, uh, you know, the level of quality of shoes that they produce, okay? So all that being said, um, my uh, video here is going to focus on these shoes, um, and I guess I'm going to, like I said, review them as if I had bought them for, you know, closer to the full retail price, and what are you getting for your money? So first of all, one of the... Uh, first things that you notice about the styling, um, from their website, by the way, they do talk about the styling. And the more you get into shoes, the more you'll see that the shape of a shoe, right? The, the, the toe shape, the profile, and some of those kind of things really do make a difference and you'll gain an eye for it. For example, if you start to see, you know, like uh, Gaziano, and Gr Gaziano and Girling shoes, you can almost, you know, point them out by the toe shape. So that's something that you're, you will develop an eye for where a new person maybe, you know, can't tell the difference. It's like a suit. When, you, when you, I first got into suits, couldn't really tell a good one from a bad one. It became really obvious then once I started to really get into suits and I got a couple of decent suits, right? So as far as this loafer goes, you can see it's got a, a broader toe box, which is normally going to be the case with a loafer. You're not going to have something, you know, quite this chiseled, I guess, or it's quite this angular. Uh, on a loafer uh, because it is more casual and that's also going to let it fit a you know a little more of a variety of uh, feet um, you can see the profile here the toe box kind of is a little bit tapered down rounded um, and really nice i believe this is hand stitched right where you take the leather and they, they pinch it there and they pull that together beautifully done um, and it's kind of interesting if you look at it it's just it's gorgeous right but notice some of the stitches there are a little further apart. I believe this is hand done. It's kind of interesting. You get into stuff like this. The handmade stuff is highest, considered the highest level, not because it is technically like the most exact spacing, but you see those tiny variations. It's really pristine, neat, but those tiny variations let you know that it is hand done. So um, another thing that I, I picked up on, and this is the hardest thing to convey through YouTube, is the leather quality. Now notice, I wear these, and to be quite frank with you, I leave these by the front door because they're a loafer, um, and I probably don't respect these as much as I should, to be honest with you. I leave these by the front door, and I generally don't put shoe trees in them. So if I was a little more diligent with my shoe trees, and they look pretty much just like this, I'll cut in a picture here, but they looked, as you can see, pretty much just like they do right now when I got them, meaning there are some rolls in the vamp. But now, what I want you to see is how the leather rolls gently, 
And all calf skin will have wrinkles. That's one of the hallmarks of good calf skin leather. You see, it's got very fine, neat, very neat, fine wrinkles in it, right? But it returns to shape very nicely if it would do more so if I put shoe trees in them religiously. I know you guys are shocked, right? That I would have shoes that I don't put shoe trees in. But um, the, the leather quality, so that's one indicator, the way it rolls and wrinkles very neatly, the way it returns uh, without evidence of creasing. But another one is the feel of it. The hand of the leather is what it's called. This leather, let me try and explain why I believe this is such high quality leather. First of all, it has a softness to it, but not soft. Like I've had shoes before that were like sheepskin and they were just soft and structureless. This has some structure. This has some tensile strength to it. It's not extremely thin, but it's kind of buttery smooth. I don't know if you can even hear this. But it, it, it's just, it's got a different feel than most of the other shoes that I've owned. Um, you know, the Cobble Union shoes are, are pretty high quality leather, but it's, you know, this leather just feels a little bit tougher. So like I said, the, the leather quality here feels very smooth without feeling thin or floppy. That's, that's what I feel with this leather. And something else is the color. This is called museum. When you see this mottled color, like the dark and light mix, that's called museum. It's actually not terribly obvious at first. It's there. I really love it. It's beautiful, right? You generally only see that on higher end shoes or custom dyed shoes, right? But in other words, I think it's nice because it adds character to the shoe, um, but it's not like, uh, you know, obnoxious, like you're trying to garner attention or something like that, you know? So as I kind of already said, um, I believe these do have uh, blind stitched soles right hidden channel stitching soles kind of a shame as i already said that they have uh the rubber put on them of course you have a real stacked leather heel construction with a rubber a leather rubber combo heel now you see it says jl for john lobb this used to be for a long time i believe their standard signature heel which i think is kind of cool because you know you're walking away you may see that and the people in the know would be like hey wait a minute right but i'm going to cut in another picture here on their current website, you'll see, first of all, the heel is uh, not this construction anymore. It's more of a traditional leather rubber combo heel, which I still really enjoy. Um, but another thing is I don't see this color on their website. Uh, the closest thing they have, there's a couple different colors here in the brown range. But I don't. I, if I were to name this color, I would call it like a walnut museum, as I think of what it would be. Um, the sizing, I think, for, again, 10.5 UK would be 11.5 US. I think is uh, you know pretty true to size. It's definitely not on the narrow side. I think this, in my opinion, would fit more like a US 11 and a half D, maybe a US 11 and a half E, if you're buying them. Um, again, the toe box shape is gives you, it's a little more generous. Whenever I have a problem with the shoe, it's always the right foot, the right side of my right foot, uh, because I have a, uh, relatively short toes. My right foot measures about 11 double E uh, to 11 and a half double E with a ball length, meaning where the ball of my feet sit, about 12 to 12 and a half on both feet. Left foot is longer at 11 and a half, uh, about an E. So the point is my right foot is wider and I always have width problems there where my right pinky toe, if this is my foot, my right pinky toe would hit the shoe first. And these are snug. You know, again, I thrifted these. I didn't have a choice in size. I would have gone up to a 12. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I would have gone up from 11 and a half to 12. So that would have been an 11 UK. 11 UK, if I just gone up one length, would have given me a little more width, a little more length, but perfect. Like these, if I wear them with really thin socks or no socks are pretty good. A um, little snug, you know, at first. So, um, so really high leather quality. I mean, look at the density of that stitching. See how close that stitching is together, right? It's gorgeous. Trying to point out some of the other features, obvious features on it. You can see a little bit of wheeling if I get it in the light there, right? Okay. And they've been exposed to some, you know, wet and use in water. So you can see the surface finish on the heels is not perfect anymore, right? It is beautifully stamped there. John Lobb, right? Isn't that cool? And what it says is uh, John Lobb made in England, right? That's pretty awesome. There are some nails are hard to see, but there are some uh, nails in the heel. And you already saw, it's got a half lining here on the footbed, right? Um, it is lined. Some loafers are kind of like unlined. These are lined, right? And they are fully lined. Um, they're comfortable. There's not, uh, I'm not sure what's in between the uh, footbed uh, and the outsole. 
because I've worn these a little bit. There must be some cork. I can feel some indenting, in other words, taking conforming, taking shape, but they don't seem to conform as much as my Allen Edmonds. I'm guessing because it's a low for maybe the thickness of the, um, you know, the cork bed is a little thinner. Um, I don't know for a fact that there is a cork bed, but the point is they're not especially comfortable. Uh, they feel like they have a fairly thin sole on them, which would be normal for a loafer. Um, oh, here's another feature I just realized. There's stitching there, but then there's a second row of stitching below that around the heel. Right? Kind of nice. So uh, I really think, even though it's a beautiful looking shoe, and I feel very blessed to have them. You know, every time I put them on, I'm like, I'm wearing John Lobb shoes. You know, and I don't say that to anybody, right? Because again, nobody that I know, short of you guys that watch your channel, you know, or a couple of my friends I've already talked about this, my shoe friends, would know who the heck John Lobb is. So even though I really do like the shoes, um, here's a few things. I've worn these, I don't know, at least a dozen, you know, probably, probably closer to... Uh, you know, if I don't include the times I just wore them to the store, but I've worn them out probably 12 to 15 times. Um, never gotten one compliment on them. Not once. Um, and not that I would want to buy a shoe to get compliments, but here's my overarching feeling with these. They're not especially comfortable. They're not especially good looking. I mean, yeah, the, the, the shape is nice, but it's not different enough to differentiate itself. Of the looks, the only thing I can really say that elevates it above the other things would be the, you know, the, the museum finish, um, which you wouldn't get if you got a solid color, um, and the feel of this leather. But uh, again, the feel of the leather is nice, and I think that's going to contribute more to its longevity of the shoe. You know, the upper's not cracking, the upper's staying soft and supple, da-da-da, uh, more than a looks thing. The overarching feeling I guess I get from these is I don't see where the $1,780 is. I mean, in other words, what you're getting is, you know, not more money than a six or $700 shoe, but you are getting a John Lobb, you know? So I guess to me, it's hard to justify the cost in this unless you really love and you really want a John Lobb shoe. Does that make sense? So, you know, I wouldn't buy Gucci shoes and I've had Gucci shoes. I've thrifted, I've thrifted them, you know, and sold them, um, you know, and they're really expensive, you know, but, and they're not that great quality. You know what I mean? In other words, you buy an $800 Gucci shoe, you're, you know, not getting as good craftsmanship, you know, as a, as a, you know, six or seven or, you know, hundred dollar shoe from another shoemaker, you know? Um, you know, but like, let's say like Cobbler Union, $450 shoe, you know, or, you know, $400 shoe. Um, so to me, it's just like that extra thousand plus dollars, that's hard to justify. I don't, it, it, I, I don't see the value in it, you know? Um, so like I said, I think this shoe is not trying to compare with anybody. And if I said this, or they heard me say this, John, they'd be like, they could give two rips what I think, right? Because they have a set price, they're not apologizing for it, and they obviously are staying in business selling it at that price point, right? You know, which means they're making a shoe in the process that they want to make it in, the way they want to make it, with the craftsmanship that they want, and then they're going to sell it at the price that shoe. They're not competing or comparing with anybody, right? So again, my thoughts and feelings on it are um, not worth the money, but... This is not a shoe you buy for the price. This is not the shoe that you buy when you, uh, you know, are looking at a budget or something like that, you know. Um, like, you know, restaurant example. There's a restaurant in Bath near us here called Lannings, right? Um, that place is really pricey, you know. I mean, any any more for my, you know, two two kids, uh, you know, one's uh, 15 and a half right now and uh, one's about to be 12. And it's hard to eat for, you know, to sit down restaurant for under 100 bucks, you know. But Lannings was almost four times that, you know. Um, they're not trying to compete with, a, you know, another restaurant on price. They say, you come here and you eat what we have or you don't, period. You know, that's kind of this shoe as well, right? If that makes sense. But I do want to do a little experiment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this pair of shoes here. I'm going to take this uh, cheap pair of Bostonian loafers here that I've had forever. Only reason that they're not destroyed is I just don't wear them. And I know it would be better to do a loafer but I don't have another shoe, so this test is still going to have some validity. I'm going to take 
this pair of Cobbler Union shoes. So what I have is a, let's call it a $60 shoe, $450 shoe, an $1,800 shoe. And I'm going to show these shoes to some people. And I want to see which one they think is the $60 shoe, the uh, $450 shoe, and the $1,800 shoe. Just curious, right? Let's go have some fun and see what people say. By the way, stick around to the very end of the video if you want an explanation as far as why my channel went from just all shoes slash sartorial cobbling to also cobbling in cars. I'm here with my friend Stacy, and I like her fashion sense and her style. And I'm picking a few people that have good fashion sense and style and I think can articulate things well, but um, like are not shoe, men's shoe aficionados, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's the setup, and you really have been prepped almost zero, right? Yeah, I have no idea what we're really doing here. Okay, now you know me, yeah. and you know I don't pay, pay full price for nothing, right? right. Okay, yes. so but one of these shoes in front of you, uh, the new retail price is about 60, 70 bucks. Okay. One of them, the new retail price is 450. Okay. One of them, the new retail price is 1,780. Hmm. Okay, all I want you to tell me is which one is the cheap shoe, Mm -hmm. which, what's the, which one is the mid-priced $450 shoe? And which one is the almost $1,800 shoe? By the way, I would pick them up and look I at them. pick them up. Look at okay. them, touch them inside and out. And if you want to verbalize whatever you're seeing that you think looks John cheaper. John Lobb is mm -hmm. embossed. Mm -hmm. Let's see what this is. I will tell you two Even things. England. I will tell you two things. This rubber uh -huh. part did not come on that shoe. This rubber part did not come on that shoe. Okay. Those were added on. Okay. You did notice made in England. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't really tell what that is. And is, the, is the logo still? Leather okay. upper, leather outer sole. That's the Bostonian. But I feel like, I don't know. Okay. This one. This one, at first glance, looks to be the most expensive, and I'm not sure. If I want to make that the most expensive one. Made in Spain. Hmm. This is interesting because <laughs> this feels a little cheapy to me out here. Oh, really? And I don't okay. see... Okay. This isn't a hundred percent fair because that shoe is a different style. We have two similar styles and one different, but Gosh. is there one that you're sure about? Is there any one that you're sure about? Okay. So I think this one, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't say leather, but I feel like it feels better. I want to mm -hmm. say, no, hang on. Could you say what you just said again? Um, you feel like what? I feel like it feels like real leather. Uh -huh. but it it feels better, say. I think, is what you actually said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Better That's than noteworthy, that. by the way. Uh -huh. So I want to say, I'm going to go with this one's the most expensive. Okay. Mm, these two. Yeah, I don't like this. This one looks to be expensive, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of worried it's not. Yeah. Um, this one does say leather. Is this Spain leather? This one, India. Jeez, this is tough. Okay, I want to say this is the next expensive. Oh, really? Okay. And this okay. one's the cheapest. That came out very differently than I thought it would. So you were right. <laughs> This John Lobb is, Yay! you know, seventeen hundred eighty dollars full okay. retail price. This Bostonian is actually sixty seventy bucks. It does look cheap. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, I, there, there's, there's, there's there's one yeah. other thing that make, there's one other thing that makes this look more expensive than it, it really was. Uh -huh. Is I actually put this burnishing on. I changed the color of it a little bit. It's ah, gradual. it's got that double, so, yeah. double color. And this this is a Cobbler Union. These are the ones. If you remember when I was in Atlanta with you guys last two years, a year yeah. and a half ago. These are the Cobble Unions I bought. I did the video on them, and I got them for basically half price for doing a video. Oh, nice. So they are a $450 shoe, but and like I said. And they do look expensive, but as far as yeah. feel yeah. and everything, I thought, eh, this might be. Here's the but reason. But this one definitely the most expensive. This video is a review of these shoes, and here's my point, and I want to see what your input is. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we should ever buy things to impress people. I think that's right. a really dumb life philosophy, yeah. right? Yes. But, but I'm assuming if you spend 1700 1800 bucks on a pair of shoes, 
you can spend, you, you know, you are of means, yes. right? So if I had already achieved that decision and it was a sound financial decision, it would irritate me if what I got didn't have that kind of shelf appeal, I guess. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Think this is worth it? I do. Really? Yeah, I, just by touching yeah. and really? looking that's... at it. I, I use my hands. I use everything. Yeah, yeah. I see the thickness here that's yeah. much thicker. It does, it, it does have a nice feel to it, doesn't it? Here. Like yeah. it's very supple without yeah. being soft and floppy. But as far as yeah. like style, I think the mm -hmm. style might not be something I would choose yeah, yeah, if yeah. I was purchasing that. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I'm not a man, so I don't yeah. know. So there you go. So uh, I was really curious because, of course, I have my views, and then I have what I think other people would view, and mm -hmm. this is exactly the reason I was doing this. So that does mm -hmm. make me feel good, at least that this does have, you know, some value, yep. in, you know, in, in that Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. Okay, now I picked you guys here. I'm here with my uh, I'm here with my friends Mandy. She runs a business called Kitchen Two Twelve. By the way, if you're in Northeast Ohio looking for a caterer, description below. And Darlene, uh, Darlene's a realtor here with Key Realty again, Northeast Ohio. But I picked you guys because I know you guys well enough that you'll be honest. You have opinions. I think you are you have good fashion sense. But I don't think you actually know specific brands of men's dress shoes. I thought you're perfect for this. Yeah, okay, we do not. So here's the setup we have here. One of these pairs of shoes, and I've not told them which, one of them is about $60, $70 full retail price. One of them is $450 full retail price. One of them is $1,780 full retail price. Uh, and I want you guys can pick them up, look at them. The only thing I want you to know is this pair here did not come with the rubber on the soles. Somebody added that on and somebody added the rubber on those. So don't judge that but you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, your job oh, is to tell wow. me which one's $60, which one is the 450 and which one is the $1,780 like shoe. Price is right. I know. <laughs> yes. Is it fair to say you guys don't follow men's shoe brands, right? Not, Not at all. all. Okay, perfect. Not at all. Part of the reason I'm just giving you the background is kind of like a, is it worth it kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I think they're all nice looking shoes. Uh-huh, okay. Did you smell it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the leather. <laughs> um... If I had to guess right now, I would say that this is the $60 shoe. Really? Okay. That's what I was thinking too. Mm, okay. I'm going opposite of what I think. Then this would be the 450. Okay. And then this would be the most expensive one. Interesting. Okay. I think I'm going to put this one at the top, the most expensive one. How come? How come? I don't know. There's just a little more style to it. Okay. than just the, like the straight flat and this one just looks like it does kind of look like an everyday so that's shoe. why i feel like it's just a standard yeah. uh-huh yeah this, so darlene, you, you, will probably be the which one do you think is the low-end one darlene really the you guys both one. agree with that yeah okay. and okay. then maybe this one at the top it's got like some interesting and this would be your wrinkles and form fitting and uh -huh. this one's kind of a planer mm -hmm. okay i'll uh so decisions made final answers yeah Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll We're gonna actually see how much write. Our knowledge is wrong. They're in order: sixty, four fifty, seventeen eighty. Oh. So we got this you one right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a Bostonian. It's a cheap shoe. Um, this is Cobbler Union. You know, this one actually has a lot of the higher end features in it. I couldn't tell a lot by that. I was trying to figure out like what fiddleback the waist. Soles. I just I feel like oh. I see a lot of people or guys who wears shoes like this. So I just assumed it was more of like a standard yeah, right, right, $60 right, right. shoe. Yeah. So the interesting... Or like in brown. My... I thought the way this was going to go was every woman was going to say this is definitely the more expensive mm -hmm. shoe because of the color in it and because yeah. of the way the sole looks with that... They call this a narrowed waist. They call this a narrowed waist yeah, and then that hump is called a fiddleback. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, and I thought nobody would think but all three of you have said... That the John Lobb, by the way, John Lobb, this shoemaker, um, has a, what is it called, a, a, a warrant, I think it's what it's called, to produce shoes for, like, King Charles. Oh, wow. You know, like, I mean, they're the most expensive shoemaker in England. You know what I mean? And, 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 by I the can way, see what you're saying. Yeah, it's just, about, I was looking yeah. at, like, the fit and the... The leather yeah, quality yeah. is amazing. This is called mm -hmm. a museum patina. It's but all three of you, <laughs> all three of you picked out that as the most expensive one, or I thought for sure you wouldn't, so... Uh, Which is your favorite? Um, I like these. I got them for 15 bucks. It looks comfortable, too. <laughs> they're, they're store. Um, it, it, they are comfortable. 
So kind of the summary of my review of them was they're great, but unless you're looking for a John Lobb shoe, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I guess you, the three of you may have swayed my opinion a little bit. Where? Which shoe did you wear today? Um, I wore the John Lobbs. Yeah, but I, I mean, I guess the lesson I learned is that women can see quality and there yeah. is something to Even it. Even if we don't know anything about I it. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank yeah. you, ladies. So I know a couple of you are already probably in the comments here saying, you know, hey, you ding dong. You said that all three of them chose John Lobb as a top and they didn't. Mandy chose Bostonian. So I, I realized that. Uh, number one, I realized I'm a ding dong. Um, I don't know if I just didn't listen or what, but um, I guess it proves that anybody can be a YouTuber, right? So I'm not sure what I learned from this. Um, I'm not sure if there was a point or purpose to this video, but Stacy said in order from highest to lowest, John Lobb, Bostonian, Cobbler Union. Mandy said, Bostonian, John Lobb, Cobbler Union. Although she did also say, I think she said something to the effect of, I'm uh, you know, going to say the opposite of what I, you know, I got. So if we took that into account, she's putting Cobbler Union at the top, then John Lobb, then uh, Bostonian. Uh, and Darlene said John Lobb, Bostonian, Cobbler Union. So I really like the Cobbler Union shoes. I love the Cobbler Union shoes. They're not very comfortable. They're, they're lower down on the scale of comfort, but they're gorgeous. You know, like if I'm going out and I want to, you know, impress somebody, I guess I would say, um, I usually wear either those or I do have a pair of, um, you know, Polo Ralph Lauren. Maybe I should have used those for the comparison. Oh, well, Polo Ralph Lauren, um, um, monk strap shoes, but uh, so, but everybody rated the Cobbler Union low, which I thought the reason I used it was because of the way it looked. It was cut, the fiddle back waist, da da da. I thought for sure I was going to fool everybody that that's the top. So, um, I'm not sure that I learned anything in this video other than the John Lobb quality did come through. Because there, that was the only shoe that had a consistent either two of the three ladies marked it at the top rating and one set in the middle. So, um, I guess what that told me is kind of like I said there, uh, you know, at the uh, you know place we're recording, the restaurant we're recording, that there is something about a high quality shoe, a true high quality shoe that does come through. And I think what it is with the John Lobb is it's the leather feel and the way the leather looks, because it wasn't the way necessarily, I don't think the Cabo Union looked that people said, oh, that's a cheaper one, but when they touched it, but it's not bad leather. I mean, it's not a cheap shoe. So I'm really blown away, I guess. So um, if you guys want to comment below, like what the takeaway from this is, you know, um, you know, you can put that below. My overall impression of the shoe is, as I've already said, unless you're looking for a John Lobb shoe, I don't think it's worth the money, but it is a gorgeous shoe. So let me give these shoes a ratings. For aesthetics, I give it, I'm going to give it four out of five stars. The reason I don't give it five is even though the leather looks beautiful, you know, the touch and feel, you know, those kinds of things, the stitching around the apron is beautiful. Um, the, I guess the only thing that brings it down a little bit would be just, there's nothing special about the, the last shape, in my opinion. Um, and I don't know how low, you know, how nice you can actually make a penny loafer, you know. So, uh, you know, four out of five for that. Fit and comfort is four. They're nice. They're pretty comfortable. Not super comfortable. I feel like there's not as much compression, you know, between the insole, the cork bed, and the outsole, you know, as some other shoes I've worn. Um, so they're pretty comfortable. Uh, build quality, definitely five. You know, they're immaculately done on the outside. Uh, the clicking, the stitching, the, you know, again, leather quality. Construction durability, I give them five. Cost value, I'm going to give them the lowest score I think I've ever given on a shoe, which is going to be two, just because there's $1,780. And I just don't see, you know, almost $1,800 worth of value brought back. So that's my opinion. Uh, that gives it an overall score of a 4.0. Just to give you a frame of reference, Warfield and Grand Boots that I reviewed last week uh, that are 200 to 225 bucks, I gave them a 4.4 with the same scale. Allen Edmonds Atchison's that I bought on sale for, I got those for $97 new from Allen Edmonds. Uh, those were 3.8. My Allen Edmonds, Allen Edmonds McAllister's that I got on sale for 225, like five years ago, were 4.4. And the Cobbler Union Richards that I purchased uh, um, in, in Atlanta from Cobbler Union, uh, those I gave a score of 4.5. So I do feel like I kind of owe you guys an explanation as to why is my channel suddenly after about six years or whatever it diverged and I started to have all this automotive content. Long story short, I was always a huge gearhead. I had an awesome, a really cool 1986 Olds Cutlass with a big block in it that got stolen in 2004. 
Well, you know, uh, that was about the same time that I went into business for myself. My income went down. And then, you know, when having kids, it just, you know, that hobby just kind of had to go to the, to, you know, way back on the back burner. And I, I couldn't have content about that kind of stuff when I didn't even have a car. And I realized after turning 50 that if I'm going to do something when I grow up, I was kind of running out of time on the clock. You know what I'm saying? So that, uh, um, when I got the car, summer of 2023, I knew I was going to document it. I thought about starting a separate channel, but just to be honest with you guys, there's real downsides to that, meaning no fan base, you know, et cetera. And I was putting so much time into that, I didn't have the, the shoe content. The, the pandemic and the lifestyle change of the pandemic has hurt my shoe content because we're not wearing as much shoes. We're not in the office together. We're all working from home more. You know, the part-time staff just isn't there to wear shoes out and ding them up and send them to me. So... You know, car car content suddenly went, you know, was there that wasn't there, and my shoe content went down. Plus, I used to be able to pull five to 10,000 views just by putting the word Alan Edmonds in a title. I really believe I did some of my best uh, sartorial slash cobbling content during the pandemic, and my views went in the toilet. I couldn't, I couldn't pull a 1,000 views. So I just made the executive decision. I says, well, channel's in the toilet view-wise anyway. I stopped caring about what the views were. This is how I started the channel, by the way. I stopped caring about what the views were, and I just posted content. I bet, did the best content that I could, and I said, whoever's going to watch it's going to watch it. So that's why I am where I'm at. I hope that uh, kind of makes sense to you. That guys. being said, fire away below. If you liked this video, please hit that little you know thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Um, again, cobbling and cars. My channel used to be all just cobbling and sartorial and suit stuff. You're going to see both kinds of videos. It'll obviously be very clear. I will try to keep a little bit more consistent basis, more of the sartorial kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I just hope that you guys have a blessed day and uh, that this content does bring you some value, okay? God bless you guys. Take care. Thank you so much. I've been a huge fan in the past of... Rubber protective half soles. I lost the other shoe. Where the crap is it? No, it's right here. Um, most a bespoke. I'll t uh, t okay, so I'm here with my friend Stacy, and I'm going to use her for no use. <laughs>